Hello, uh, this is Pastor Victor. Um, today in this video, I want to share with you one thing that is needful. One thing that is needful. According to the Bible, there is only one thing that is needful. That's what Jesus said in Luke chapter 10. He said, one thing is needful. In our lives, our daily work, we do so many things. We do things like, you know, we take off our children, our families. We pursue our goals and our careers and our businesses and our jobs. We, we wake up in the morning and people rush up to their work and to their businesses and think that we have so many tight schedules in these days, in this fast-paced world. And so many things that captures our attention, that demands our attention in our daily work, in our daily schedule. In your daily schedule, have you discovered that one thing that is needful? That one thing that is needful? That one thing that is needful. According to Jesus, there are not many things that is needful. He said, one thing is needful. Other things are important, okay, but I just say one thing is needful. He never said so many things. So what is that thing? And today I want to share something powerful from scriptures. And I believe if you get a hold of this, it will greatly impact your life. And I'm very, very confident about that. I'm very sure, I'm very sure. This will change your life. Amen. You know, um, let me read a scripture for in Luke chapter 10, verse uh, 41 to 42. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. Mary has chosen the best part. It will not be taken away from her. Amen. So, here Jesus was visited Mary and Martha in their home. And when he visited them, Martha was very busy in the kitchen, just like many of us today. So busy. People wake up in the morning quick. They are up to work. Some 4 a.m. they're already gone. Some 5 a.m. Some, you know, very early they are already off to work. And we pursue all these things, which are equally also important. But Jesus said one thing is needful. It's needful. And that means if we ignore that one thing, every other thing will crumble in our life. And that's true. Very, very important. So Martha, just like many of us today, were very busy. And this one, his busyness was not in something even that is wrong, you know. She was busy trying to prepare, fix a meal for Jesus, prepare a meal for the Lord. And But Jesus knew that was something that was more important than the meal. If you look at the verse 38 of that chapter 10, Bible said, Mary, who was the sister of Martha, was sitting at the feet of Jesus. I want you to take notice of that the feet of Jesus. She was sitting there. And the Bible says she heard his word. She heard his word. She heard his word. And Jesus said, that thing that Mary did is that one thing that is needful. And the Bible says it cannot be taken away from her. One thing that is needful. So that one thing that is needful is sitting at the feet of the master. Sitting, you know. In a child's life, when a child begins to give birth to the child, the child always lying down on the back and all of that. The first thing the child does before he walks is sitting. Maybe you haven't thought about that. The child has to learn how to sit first before he starts walking, then start running. You know. So if you don't learn how to sit in the kingdom of God, you can't walk. That means your sitting affects your daily walk. Your daily work is your daily activities, the things you go to do, your careers, your goals that you're pursuing, the things you are chasing after, your dreams, you know, money and all these kind of things that we occupy our lives with, you know, which are not bad in itself, you know, but when it is misplaced, then there's a problem. And, you know, Jesus is saying that that one thing is more needful than all these things. And when that thing, that one thing that is needful is not in place, Every other thing in our life will crumble. That's, that's very important. You know, and that one thing, according to Jesus, sitting at the feet of Jesus. Let me give you another story in the Bible that buttresses this point that I'm trying to share with you. Because, you know, sitting at the feet of Jesus, I'm talking about personal communion with the Lord, spending time with Jesus in prayer, in meditation of his word. It's a very simple exercise. But I believe that it's the most important kingdom activity. Recently, I asked a dear man of God, a very powerful man of God that I met, and I asked him, what is the most important activity in his daily schedule? A great man of God, you know, uh, Bishop Samuusu, you know, you know him, and I uh, asked him this simple question, face to face, and I asked him, and he told me that the most important 
activity in his daily schedule is his time with God, his prayer time. And I knew he's nailed the answer right on the head. And I think that is the most important thing in every one of us, our daily schedule, your prayer time, spending time with the Lord. It's the most important activity. You know, the, if that activity is removed from your daily schedule, every other thing in your life begins to fall out of place. I realized that the more time I spend praying, the more time I spend with the Lord in praying and seeking Him and all of that, the more every other thing begins to work and find its place. So I ensure that I spend more time praying than doing so many other things that I do in my life. And so spending time with the Lord in prayer is very simple. It's important. This is the reason why the devil doesn't want you to pray. The devil doesn't want you to spend time with the Lord. You'd rather be occupied with so many things, you know. If you don't do, Joseph Prince says something. He said, if you don't do that one thing is needful, I mean, the many things will be worried about them. He said, because we're worried about many things because we don't do one thing that is needful. That's why we worry about many things. Look at the story of Ruth. Ruth was a nobody, second class citizen, and she happened to be in Israel. The one day she told the mother-in-law, Naomi, that she was going out in the field to, you know, um, find some grain of corn after whose side she shall find grace. The Bible says she happened to happen on the field of Boaz. And the Bible says she toiled all day, you know, worked from morning to evening. I want you to look at the story. Work from morning to evening. Let me, see, let me show you how much she got in today's language. Ruth chapter 2 verse 17. It says, So she gathered grain in the field until evening, and when she threshed what she had gathered, it came to about 30 pounds. So 30 pounds the whole day. She suffered and suffered and suffered and worked all the day. All she had was 30 pounds. Now let me show you another instance where she did nothing. But the Bible says she slept at the feet of Boaz. Naomi gave her that instruction of what to do to get the attention of Boaz, who was a kinsman redeemer to her. And the Bible says she built herself, prepared herself, went to the field, this time she didn't labor, she didn't do any activity, she only went and stayed at the feet of Boaz. She slept there all that night. Then when Boaz woke up at night, she realized that there's a woman sitting by, sleeping at her feet, and she told her she shouldn't worry. She would do anything possible for her to be redeemed. Now this woman didn't work, didn't labor. After that encounter with Boaz, just laying at their feet, look at what she went home with. Chapter 3, verse 15. He said, then he said, who are the shawl you are wearing and grip it tightly? As he held it tightly, he measured about 60 pounds of barley into the shawl and put it on the shoulders. Then he went into the town. This time she didn't do anything. Just sitting at the feet of Boaz, sleeping there and resting. You know, Boaz is a picture of our Lord Jesus Christ. And when we rest in him, spend time at his feet, sitting, you know, the increase you are going to come up with. This time she came up with double without doing anything. She did nothing. Just those sitting at the feet and, you know, ministering to, to, to Boaz, who is a picture of Jesus Christ. She went home with double of what she has labored through the sun, picking cones of grain. So this is the reason why many of us, we struggle in life. We struggle because we're just chasing up that thing. That one thing that is meaningful, we don't do. And by the time we come out of home, what we come home is just little. I admonish you today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you will take time and make spending time with the Lord a daily priority in your schedule, I guarantee you that your increase are going to double just like who spend sitting at the feet. And for most people, sitting look lazy like. I mean, you know, I'm not saying you shouldn't do anything. You should be at work, you should be diligent at your work. But make sure that in your daily schedule, nothing compromises the place of prayer, the place of spending time with Jesus. Especially those of us in ministry. I mean, spending time with the Lord is everything. It makes ministry work. It makes ministry easy. Hallelujah. Ministry can be that easy if we know what you do. And this is one of the great keys of great ministers of God. And I encourage you today that this one thing that is needful, you, you cultivate it and become a part of your daily work. And I guarantee you that your harvest and your increase is going to double. And thank you for watching. And the Lord bless you. Amen. Thank you for watching this video and I want you to do a couple of things for me. You know, in helping us reach more people with the gospel of Jesus, I will encourage you to, you know, subscribe to this YouTube channel. It's, it's, a, it's the best place to be. You can part your life. Every week we'll be uploading new videos. 
for that content that will really really enrich your work with God then also you know press the notification button for me so that when you will release any new video you will get a hold every week I promise you'll be releasing new videos for you then also go to our Facebook page Pastor Victor Ministries and like the page and follow us and get more godly content that will enrich your soul and all of that. And also we encourage you, you can partner with us as a ministry to reach more people with the gospel by, you know, contacting us through the email address and the various numbers that are there. You can WhatsApp us, you can call us and sign up as a partner. Monthly you can support and join us in reaching the nations for Jesus. God bless you for watching. Amen.